Welcome back to Sprague Homestead. I'm Nikki and today I'm going to show you how to make applesauce using a KitchenAid food mill. So the first thing you have to do is get your equipment out, which is very helpful, <laughs> and actually put your food mill together. So it can look like a whole bunch of parts and pieces if you've never done it before. Uh, usually there's a booklet that comes in the uh, kit for it. Uh, it is sold separately usually from your KitchenAid and they have a couple of aftermarket ones now that I've seen on Amazon that is not made by KitchenAid but will work with the stand mixer. You'll just have to kind of see which one you want to go with and follow directions for that. But this one is specifically a KitchenAid unit and it kind of starts with this piece right here. This is the grinder housing. Then you're going to take this little piece and you can tell the fatter end, it's got two different size shanks on it. The fatter end goes in the back. Then you've got this piece and it is going to, it's got a little square hole in it. And you put it there. Then your screen, which goes over the top, goes there. And then your screw down piece goes here. All right, and it doesn't have to be terribly tight, but if you don't think it's tight enough, the handle on the push rod actually will fit and can be used as a wrench, both directions. I don't usually use it because I can get it hand tightened enough. So once you've got this done, you take your cover off of your port, which is just that screw on the one side. And then go ahead and put this in here. There's a tab that will line up with the front of the mixer. And tighten it down. All right. That's the first part of it. Then you're going to put the cover on. This is what keeps the uh, sauce from exploding out of the front. And there is a hole in the front. So you kind of have to pick it up, put it in, and then it will slide up over the... Uh, screw down piece and then there is a clear cover that fits over the top of it so you can kind of see if it's having problems or not. That's the gist of it. So to use this um, you have to have two bowls set up. One to catch peels and debris that's coming out of this side and one that will catch the sauce coming out. So uh, you can use, for one of your catch basins, you can use the actual um, KitchenAid bowl that comes with it, or if you've got several of them. Uh, I've been cooking with these already today, doing the apple project, so they're already kind of coated in apple stuff, so why make more dishes? Okay, so from here, um, you're going to take your softened apples, and they're going to go in the chute. You've got your push rod to push them down to keep them going and you'll see them come through and you'll see the sauce run back out here and your peels and things coming out here. Now, like I said, you're gonna use softened apples. So um, ours are coming out of our project for making apple juice. So they have already cooked till softened. We've juiced a whole bunch of the juice out of them and now they're just more or less scraps. So we're gonna go ahead and, and turn them into a usable product rather than throw them out. If you are just making applesauce and not doing all that, um, it's kind of the same process. You clean your apples, you chop them up, you're going to put them in a pan uh, with a, a little bit of water. Um, depends a little bit on how much apple you're doing, but you're going to put some water in it. You're going to heat them up and then you're going to run them through the mill. The mill can't really do much with them when they're uh, in the raw form. They're just too hard. And the, the holes on the food mill for the KitchenAid are, are pretty thin, so uh, are pretty small. So you've got to make sure that they're soft so they can actually push through there. Okay, so before I start putting the apples through the machine, we are going to run this all the way up at 10. That is the highest setting on your KitchenAid. Um, it says you can do as low as 8, at least my old book. I've had this KitchenAid for probably about 15 years now, but my original book says you can run it in anywhere over 8. What I have found is if you get into a kind of a tough spot, you can really cause some damage to your motor. So keep it up to 10 
It is rather loud, um, but it'll keep it from bogging down or having any kind of problems and it will push through uh, faster and better. So um, let's get started. Okay, before I turn the machine on, I usually go ahead and pack the chute a little bit with some apples. If I ever had a complaint about this, it is the fact that this, this feed hopper is not very big. You can't put a whole lot in it. So you are gonna have to feed it from a, your separate bowl to the side. And here we go. Okay, I've stopped the grinding for just a minute so you can kind of see this is what you should expect it to look like as the applesauce is coming out. And so what it does is it comes down into the catch basin and it comes down and around and drips down here into your bowl. And that is the beginning of our applesauce. So I'm going to go ahead and grind all of my apples. I've got uh, the remnants of about 15, 16 pounds there, uh, which we did before we juiced. So I'm just gonna kind of give you a, a larger view here of the setup and uh, we'll come back to this once we're done. Okay, so when you're all done, you will end up with a pile of peels and a pot of sauce. And it's pretty normal, you'll see back here, you'll see some separation of, of the juice. That's that's fine. Uh, when you get ready to go to the next step, you're gonna fit, uh, mix it all together anyway. Now this stuff here is pretty much discard, especially since I have already juiced out of these apples. There's not a whole lot left to them. Um, you can try and make an apple scrap vinegar out of them if you want to. I do have a test uh, container that I'm trying it out of right now, but I'm not real hopeful. I don't feel like it's got enough stuff left in it uh, because there is no um, seeds or anything like that in this. It's just peels and a little bit of apple. Um, this is actually going into a pot and going out to feed the chickens tomorrow. Um, I've also used it to feed my red worms. So uh, lots of things you can do with it. If you don't have chickens and you don't have red worms, you can throw it into a compost pile. That's fine too. Okay, so once your apples are all, um, all ground down and you've got your pot, um, go ahead and take your um, food mill apart. I go ahead and immediately start soaking that thing. If the apple starts to dry in that screen, it gets very difficult to scrub out. Um, so I go ahead and take my pot that I had all of my peels and my trimmings and stuff in. I go ahead and move that to a bucket that's going to go out to the chickens. And I just fill that back up with hot soapy water and go ahead and put all of my parts for the food mill directly in there and let it soak. If I don't get to it for a while, that's fine, but at least none of that stuff is getting crusty and getting hard on there. So then once we are done with that, we are ready to do our sauce. Now, before we get too far into this, if you haven't already, go ahead and get your jars cleaned and get them hot because we're this is not going to take too awfully long. So if you're going to hold them in the canner, um, you'll wanna get that thing turned on and get your jars nice and hot. If you're using a, a dishwasher, whatever you're doing, um, everybody seems to do it a little bit differently. Just go ahead and get those things warmed up. What we're going to do now is we're going to get these apples back up to a good hot temperature. Um, one of the first things we're gonna do is we're going to go ahead and add some lemon juice to it. So it's a couple of things, it preserves the color and it uh, also just helps preserve the product, period. Um, it's going to improve the shelf life there seems to be a lot of people online that have varying opinions on whether or not apple juice or apple sauce really does need the lemon juice or not. This is the way I have made it forever and I've had great luck with it. So I go ahead and add it. Um, now, if you've got enough apples to make about eight pints or so, it tells you to add about five. I think I've only got about six in here again because mine is leftover byproduct. I didn't start with the same amount as I would in a regular recipe. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and add about four into mine. And this is four tablespoons. You do wanna use the bottled lemon juice and not fresh lemon juice. Uh, fresh lemons, of course, can vary a little bit. 
in what their um, acidic nature is. And then you just go ahead and you're going to mix that in. And then you're going to go ahead and put the pot onto a medium heat. If you feel like your sauce is too thick, and sometimes that happens when it's a byproduct off of juicing, you can add some more liquid into this if you feel like it needs it. You can also use some sugar at this point. You can add spices if you want to add cinnamon, apple pie spice, that kind of stuff. This is when we're going to do that is right now. Now I use mine plain and that's because I use it in a lot of baked goods and that sort of thing. And we just like the all natural flavor of it. Uh, we did use sweeter apples. So if you're using a lot of really tart apples and you don't like a really tart sauce, you're probably gonna wanna taste test this and put some sugar in it. But we primarily used Fuji, which is a little bit of Pink Lady. Uh, about a quarter of it was Pink Lady. So we feel like it's got a nice tang, uh, but it's also got a good sugar content. So we don't add anything to it. All right, so once your jars are hot, your sauce is hot, you are ready to get them uh, in the canner. So you get your lids uh, ready based on your manufacturer's recommendations. So I'm using some of the new curl lids that don't require being preheated. Uh, some of the ball lids don't require being preheated anymore. You just take them out, wash them, dry them, and they're ready to go. Some of the older lids, uh, sometimes the uh, Walmart brand, the Golden Harvest, some of those still require to be preheated. If that's the case, you just put them in some hot water and simmer them according to whatever their uh, re manufacturer recommendation is. So you get your jar nice and hot, like I said, put your funnel in and you're going to fill your jar up to a half inch headspace. And my sauce is still pretty thick. We like it that way. You can go ahead and turn your heat off when you're ready to. Now I go ahead and take a debubbler and run it around, um, especially with thick sauce, just to make sure I'm getting some of the bubbles out. Inevitably I won't get them all, but some of them would, is helpful. That stuff is so thick it'll even hold my, my uh, measurement tool. Okay, and then I just check my space. And it's kind of helpful sometimes if you take a spoon and flatten it out if you're not real sure. That needed a little bit more. Check my space with my tool again. And that is right where I need it to be. So. Go ahead and put your lid on, again, according to whatever the directions are from the manufacturer. Fingertip tight. <laughs> um, you can tell I've been canning all day because I think I'm immune to hot anymore. And then you can go ahead and put that one back in and get the next jar and just go ahead and do your whole batch. Okay, so once all of your jars are filled, your lids are on and they're back in the canner. And I'm going to be using the Presto Precise for this this evening. Um, you just go ahead and put it in. Just like any normal canner, you've got at least an inch of water up over the top of your jars. And I do go ahead and put the safety latch on even though it doesn't really say that for water bath. So at my altitude, we're gonna be at 30 minutes. Um, if you are under, I can't remember, it's, it's the, base, um, the base time is 20 minutes for both pints and quarts. And then you adjust for altitude. Um, I adjust another 10 minutes because of our altitude. So we put in 30 on the dial, click go, and this thing is gonna handle everything from here. Now, if you're doing it manually um, on a normal water bath canner, as usual, you're going to wait until your water is back up to a full boil, and then you'll go ahead and start your time. Um, this thing, when it is done, it is even gonna give it a five minute cool down before it notifies me to come get it out. Uh, same thing when you're done with the water bath, when you've hit your max time, go ahead and turn it off, let it sit for a little bit, and then go ahead and pull your lid off and let your lid sit for about five minutes before you pull those jars. I'm going to do the same thing here. Once it tells me that they're cool or have cooled down the five minute cool down cycle, I do take the lid off and let it cool for at least another five minutes before I pull the jars out. The reason for that, it helps prevent uh, siphoning. And that's just where it tries to rush because of the, the temperature change of those jars coming out. It's going to try and pull in too much air too fast 
and it'll blow your content out and then you can get a false seal. So uh, you want to try and for, try and prevent that kind of thing if at all possible. So I'm going to let that thing go and we'll come back to it in probably about 40, 50 minutes. Okay, and there you go. There is the jars all sealed. Got uh, six good seals on them, so they're all finished. And that is it for making applesauce. So as I'm getting ready to make my meatball video today, I realize I never actually finished the applesauce video. So I did show you what the finished product looked like, so you kind of have an idea. All of your jars should look beautiful and have sealed. If you had any trouble, please leave it down in the comments or send me an email at srhomestead at yahoo.com. Um, that goes for any stage through the process. If you've got questions, please let me know. I've made it for so long that it kind of makes me wonder if I skip over things. I try not to, but if you have questions as you go, just go ahead and, and get in touch with me and let me know. And uh, that is it for today from uh, Sprecher Homestead, if I can remember where I am. <laughs> Happy homesteading, and we'll see you next time.